Three, two, one. New York and why Launchpad starts, starts, starts now. Welcome to the third episode of the New York Launchpad, a podcast highlighting new startups, businesses, and openings in the New York City area. I'm Hal Coopersmith, and stepping onto the Launchpad is Barry Musaccio and Matthew Gray, the owner and general manager of one of my favorite places to eat, Baz Bagel, located in Nolita. Welcome to the podcast, Barry and Matthew. Hi, Hal. We're so happy to be here. Thanks for having us. So what is Baz Bagel in your own words? Uh, Baz Bagel is a neighborhood restaurant and bagel shop. Uh, We do all of our bagels in-house. We hand roll them and bake them in the traditional New York way. We also have a little diner, and we're just trying to be a nice part of a historic neighborhood that has a lot of old residents and new residents and really be part of the framework. So you mentioned bagels are a big part of your business. It's actually in the name. What is a New York-style bagel for people who don't know? I mean, there's a huge history in New York-style bagels, right? So it's about how you make the bagel, which comes from a hand-rolling uh, aspect. So we, every bagel that we make in the store is hand-rolled by, by one roller. The bagels are made with malt, which is a traditional ingredient for New York-style bagels. And after that, you kettle boil them, you bake them, then they're served. So it creates a really nice traditional taste and flavor and crunch to the bagel. And how did you come up with the recipe for the bagel? Well, bagel making kind of was like a hobby that I had. Um, I was always working in Italian restaurants and just kind of had a natural love of bagels. So... I staged just kind of like a little internship that you would do in a bakery. So I did one in a bagel bakery just kind of to see in the event that I ever open a bagel store what it would be like. Also took like a small bread baking class um, specializing in bagels at French Culinary Institute. And then, you know, a space opened up and it just kind of showed the light for bagels and we decided to go for it. How many bagels did you have to make before you came up with your recipe? A million. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know, the number was was quite large, you know, because you're you're deciding the size of the bagel, the density of the bagel, the flavors of the bagel, is it going to have salt, is it not, how much salt is it going to have, you know, what's the ratio that you're going to want of cream cheese and salmon on the bagel, so it, it kind of took a, a lot of trial and error, but finally we were able to come up with the exact bagel that we wanted to work with. How'd you come up with the name? Baz was just a nickname I had growing up as a child. I don't really know how it came about, but it was just something that, you know, kids used to call me, my dad used to call me, and when I was opening the store, I just, I went through so many names and I kind of just, this had some family history in it. It was just a nickname I had growing up. It had some nostalgia. It had some mystery to it. And I just couldn't think of a better name for the store. So you mentioned briefly that the space just opened up. Mm Mm-hmm. How did you come across the location? Well, I live across the street from the store, so that actually was a part of it. And we have some great neighbors down the street at a store called American Two Shot. And they passed by the store that had just opened up, and they they wrote us like, hey, why don't you guys take a look at this space? You know, I know you were looking in the neighborhood, and it's across the street from your house. So I did take a look at it, and at first I wasn't really 100% on that location i have my eye on things in a few other areas and once i opened the door it just came together for me and you know the way the kitchen and the layout and i just all of a sudden just saw like a beautiful luncheonette in there so how long did you have the idea before you opened the restaurant uh probably about seriously about five years so i had taken a look at some spaces before my last semi long-term job before then and thought that's when I was going to open the bagel store. I was ready to go. I was offered a job at Ruby Rosa Restaurant to be their general manager, which is an offer I really couldn't refuse. And I did that for about four years and then did the bagel concept afterwards. So what did you do to prepare for that five years? I opened up a restaurant from scratch from a construction site. They were they had just signed the lease and they literally needed everything done from choosing a designer, doing the construction, law, liquor license, everything. So I thought it was a great opportunity to learn how to open a, a restaurant, you know, also on someone else's dime, but working with a family that had a lot of history in the restaurant business and also trying to take their historic restaurant and bring it to a modern level. So It was nice to have like the values rooted in a family, but also bringing it to 2015 and how to open a business in that time period. And how did you two meet, you and Matthew? 
We met at Ruby Rose Restaurant. I began working there as a server within their first year of opening, and Barry and I met. At, she was the general manager there, and we became fast employee <laughs> <laughs> manager of friends at, at that point. Yeah, we got each other early on. So, And then, you know, I, I mean, Matthew was such a great employee. He lit up the room, and, you know, you could definitely tell there was something special there. So... When I was opening up Baz, um, I got a wonderfully written letter from Matthew saying that he would love to be a part of the process from the creative aspect to helping build the restaurant to, you know, eventually running the entire restaurant. And I couldn't think of a better fit for the store. How do you divide the responsibilities between you two? I think that I usually handle more of the numbers and the logistics and the general operations. And then I'll filter what has to get done through Matthew and he'll figure out the best way to allocate our staff and manage our kitchen team in order to meet the guidelines that are set. What's the primary food that you sell? Is it bagels? I think that we've found since our inception that bagels are the mainstay of what the customers want. I think that's what we do the best. It's what we're known for at this point. It's what everyone comes in and really wants from the store. While we sell a number of other items, bagels are really the hot, the hot seller. How many bagels do you sell in a day? Uh, we sell about 500 in the store, and we do another 700 in, sol- in wholesale, so about 1,200 a day on average. How do the sales break down between in-store versus catering? Well, it's kind of actually funny. When we open the restaurant, you know, you just kind of think, oh, I'm opening a restaurant. Everything's going to happen inside. And what we've learned is that about 60% of our sales take place in the actual doors of the restaurant. The other 40% is food that's leaving the restaurant. So that's catering, wholesale, and then general delivery is making up 40% that's actually outside the door. So it's been a very interesting dynamic and like learning process in that to see so much food people are wanting to consume outside of our doors as well as inside. So So how far away can someone get a Baz bagel? Anywhere. We ship all over the country. We also deliver to any of the five boroughs. We deliver to New Jersey, to Westchester. You know, we do a fair delivery price, basically the cost that it would get us to get to you and get the bagel back. We're not trying to make money off delivery. We're just trying to get you a fresh product if if you'd like to have our bagel. What's the furthest place away from New York City that you sell wholesale? For wholesale right now, I'll let you know very soon because we just got uh, a big catalog deal. So our frozen bagels will be in a national you know, gourmet food catalog. So it'll be all over the country. But in terms of shipping, uh, we've shipped to California, Nevada, New Mexico, Florida. So the bagels are definitely making their... Oh, actually, I know where the furthest place. Dubai. (laughs) The bagels have been to Dubai. They went with a pilot the other day that came in, put them in his bag, and brought a bunch to my sister's uh, first grade class in Dubai. You said that you're a neighborhood place, but you have accounts in California and Nevada. How did these people hear about you? Well, at the beginning, uh, we were fortunate enough to get some really nice press, um, including a really big feature in the New York Times. And once that article came out, it kind of, you know, it hit nationwide. So we started getting all these bagel aficionados from all over the country that wanted our bagels and would pay, you know, top dollar to get a New York bagel sent to them. A lot of them were people that grew up in New York, moved to other areas, and were kind of craving this hometown nostalgia that we have in our bagel. So after the initial press boost, how do you keep the restaurant sustaining? We rely on our, you know, the local neighbors. We have people that come to the restaurant five times a week. And, you know, that's our bread and butter. That's our favorite customers. And they come in, buy a bagel with butter, scrambled eggs and bagels. It just kind of like, you know, the type of people that are making up like the framework and the fabric of our restaurant and that's you know how we keep it going what percentage of your customers would you say are repeat customers 70 percent are like neighborhood regulars so we're in little italy nolita soho it's a very big tourist area as well so i'd say about 30 percent of our early morning business is coming from you know one or two time customers or cut or you know tourists that are staying in a hotel nearby They'll come five days a week as their, you know, New York breakfast in the morning. And it's just really fun for us to have a tourist clientele as well because we're becoming such a memory for them in their New York experience. 
So they come to us every day in the morning, then they go and like, you know, visit New York. But at the end of the day, they see the Statue of Liberty once, they see Empire State Building once, but they go to Baz Bagel five times. That's the kind of stuff that you remember on a trip. Hanging out with our waitresses and us and us remembering your order and then they send their friends there that, you know, next time they come and visit. So it's a nice little like weird regular dynamic, although everyone's coming from all over the world. And how do they hear about you? I think a lot of it's just, you know, walking by, word of mouth. You know, we don't do a ton of advertising and press, so we kind of rely on just, you know, people passing the word along. How many hours do each of you spend in the restaurant itself? As many as possible. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I don't think either of us count our hours that we do in a week. We just are there until the job is done. And for us, we have a lot of fun doing the job. It's the first year of a new business. We're growing it, we're seeing it prosper, we're having a fun time doing it, we're meeting new people, we're expanding a business, and so I I have no idea how many hours we put in. No idea. What's the toughest part of being in the restaurant business? I think relying on other people. Like Matthew and I are fortunate to be able to depend on each other so much, but um, you know, you're dealing with staff, you're dealing with vendors, you're dealing with contractors, other accounts, wholesale accounts, and like having to be able to, even if you're prepared 100% at the beginning of the day, that doesn't mean all the pieces of the puzzle are prepared. So a lot of it's just like troubleshooting from a late delivery or somebody changed their order at the last minute or, you know, an employee's late and just being able to maintain the energy and the flow in like this cool, calm and collective way, but also provide excellent service, get the customer what they need. And even though you came to work prepared, sometimes recognizing that the whole ecosystem of the restaurant or the restaurant world that gets you the food that you need sometimes doesn't exactly run as seamlessly as you do. How do you keep your staff motivated? Pizza? (laughs) (laughs) We have a good time. I mean, at the end of the day, we're making bagels and eggs and a party. You know, we're just having a good time every day. I think that keeping everyone motivated has never been a hard part for Barry or I. We just have a good time while we're in the restaurant. And I mean, so we have flamingo straws and our milkshakes. Like, I don't know. We just let everyone have fun and express their personality. Like, there's definitely the steps of service that we follow, but we let people do it in their own way and express their own personality. Like, the uniform, we wear old school white shirts on the top, but everyone can wear whatever they want underneath it. So I think that's kind of fun for the girls to be able to, and the guys, to be able to show a little bit of their personality through there. And everyone can just be themselves at best. Well, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. The design inside of Baz Bagel is fantastic. How do you come up with that? Uh, it's all of my favorite things in one store. <laughs> that's kind of where it came from. Uh, a lot of it just over time, you just start seeing, picking up on different design elements that you like and different restaurants and themes and colors. And in, in my mind, they just kind of started sticking in this weird registry and for the store I wanted something that definitely hit a nostalgic point but in the same way existed in a modern way so if you walk into the store you can't really pinpoint is it from 1940 is it from 1960 is it from 2015 it's very original like we put a lot of items in there that are found that are you know we built ourselves and I didn't want to really make it into any toward, sort of exact theme but a little bit of everything to kind of just make people feel comfortable and welcome no matter what age group or demographic you're coming from. So aside from testing out a million bagels, Mm -hmm. how did you come up with the recipes? Taking a bagel that we like the most and then tweaking it. So we found one bagel at Goldberg's Bagel in New Jersey that was a very similar bagel to what we wanted to do. And then we just kept tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it until we got to the right Place. Uh, luckily, we also have a lot of old-timer uh, bagel guys that work in the store, too, so we have a lot of experience. So when we said, oh, we want something that was a little bit more chewier and slightly more crunchier, they were able to have the skill set to make those adjustments pretty quickly in order for us to be able to you know, have the exact bagel we wanted. And start to finish, how long does it take to make a bagel? Well, the process starts the day before. So we roll bagels the day before, and then they 
Um, they rest in a dough retarder, which is basically like a walk-in refrigerator that is at a specific temperature in order to let the dough ferment over time. And then once we're ready to bake it, uh, we boil the bagels for about a minute or so, depending on where they're proofed to. And then in the oven, anywhere between like 18 and 30 minutes is a typical bake. And how do you predict how many bagels to make for the next day? For most of our catering orders and big orders, they come the day before. So we have a plan of what we're going to do. And then for the store and wholesale, it's pretty much on a regular basis. So we always keep extra bagels. Like a bagel can sit for a day or two afterwards and with the fermentation process. So there's always extra in there in case we have a ton of extra bagels we need to make. Aside from bagels, one of the things is that you were named Best Blintz in New York Magazine. Tell me about that. Our Blintzes have been named in New York Magazine, which was great for us. We are really happy to have a lot of local ingredients included in our Blintzes. We use Aleva's ricotta cheese, which is across the street from us in Little Italy. Did you always know that you were going to use the ricotta cheese across the street? No. No. <laughs> It's typically used a farmer's cheese, and we were looking into that, and ricotta cheese is just a very similar type of cheese, so when we were doing recipe testing, we went across the street, it's a hundred year old, like, adorable, historic bakery and dairy, so we went over there, got the cheese, brought it over, and we tried it with the recipe, and it just ended up working out so well that we figured, why not, let's just keep it. And what about the other items on the menu? How'd you come up with those? A lot of the items are very traditional. A lot of them come from Barry's grandmother's recipes, uh, Joyce, who has a lot of great recipes. Uh, her latkes are on the menu. Uh, we have a lot of other traditional items like classic diner items, pancakes, grilled cheese with challah, things like this that you'll find in traditional diners, comfort food, traditional recipes. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel with anything. A lot of this like very homespun, easy menu items that taste great and are very well done. What are the hours of the restaurant? We are open from 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, and then 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Is it a challenge being open only till 4 or 6 p.m.? No, for us, we found that it's our traditional customer base really is wanting our product during those hours. The morning hours are especially busy, obviously, between the hours of 7 until 10 o'clock, we have a lot of people who come in pre-work to get their bagel, get their coffee, grab their eggs, and, uh, and we have a huge lunch crowd that, that comes in for, for lunch every day. After the hours of 4... After the hours of 4 o'clock, we kind of decide that time is best used because we have our wholesale starting at midnight. So we start rolling bagels for the next day, and the volume is so high, and we are a tiny neighborhood restaurant. You know, we pay rent 24 hours a day. So... 4 p.m. starts, we start preparing for the next day and uh, getting things ready. Is rent your biggest expense? Rent is our biggest expense, and then labor is also a huge expense for us. Um, in the bagel world, you have very specialized positions. So you can't just say, oh, the dishwasher will roll the bagels when he's not washing dishes, and you know the baker will just cook eggs when he's not baking bagels. It doesn't really work like that. We're working with a very, very old traditional way of doing these things. So there's a limited amount of talent that can actually hand roll a bagel, that can bake a bagel in our way. So we have to keep people in kind of specialized roles, which makes labor and rent our biggest challenge. Tell me about Baz Bingo. Baz Bingo is a special event that we throw every other Wednesday at the restaurant. And it is uh, just a fun all-out event for uh, people to come to from the neighborhood or from anywhere in the city or, or otherwise. And it's not only bingo, but it's a, a fun event full of music and mayhem for, uh, for everyone. We also serve a lot of our diner classics that evening, a lot of our most specialty items from the menu. Do you guys have any plans to expand? I think expansion is like a very tricky thing, especially when it comes to new restaurants in New York right now. People are opening the doors and you know, six months later they have three locations and this, that, a food court. For us, we're really harboring a neighborhood business. We want to be part of a neighborhood. We want to be a restaurant that's of the area, of the location. And that's kind of why we opened the store. We didn't open the store with the framework to have 12 of them or become like the Chipotle of bagels. We opened it so we can have a relationship with the people in the neighborhood. And definitely expansion is something that we can do. And for us, it's 
the way that we want to do it is behind the scenes. We're a bagel bakery, so there's so many cafes and grocery stores and offices that require bagels, that require catering, and you know we want to preserve our little pink storefront that exists in a historic street in Little Italy and you know use all the tools that we have behind the scenes in order to get our bagels out in the rest of the the rest of the city. Bagels really are a quintessential New York City food and what's interesting is that all at once a lot of places kind of opened focusing on bagels. You and I don't think we need to mention them but you know who they are. Why do you think that that really happened all at once? Well I think in this specific neighborhood we just don't have any bagels. I know myself, the owners of Black Sea, the owners of a new bagel store opening up on West Broadway. There's just really no bagels in the neighborhood. We have a lot of pizza places. We got croissant places on every corner. We just don't have bagels. So I just think it was, you know, it was inevitable that people were going to decide to open bagel stores. And I think it was just a happy coincidence that you know, so many opened at the same time that we were able to, you know, feed off each other's press and also allowed the customer to try so many different styles of bagels at the same time. You sell yourself as a neighborhood place, but to me, you're really a destination. How do people get to you and how do people learn more about Baz Bagel? You can find us at 181 Grand Street between Mulberry and Baxter. You can take the 6 train to Canal, the D train to Grand, or the NNR to Canal Street. Or uh, check us out at www.bazbagel.com. Barry Misaccio, Matthew Gray, thank you for sharing your time with us. And if you want to learn more about the New York Launch Pod, you can follow us on social media at NYLaunchPod or visit us at nylaunchpod.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of the New York Launch Pod. For more information, please visit nylaunchpod.com.